Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Griffith Observatory. My name is Douglas. I'm one of the many museum guys that works for the world's most visited public observatory. And you can find yourself standing about the Foucault Pendulum. It's called the Foucault Pendulum because a guy named Foucault invented it a long time ago in France. What it's showing us is both ordinary and extraordinary. So give me a few minutes of your time, and I promise to educate you. And like folks, we're going to do what Albert Einstein did, and that's conduct a thought experiment. My favorite experiment of his was he imagined himself traveling at the speed of light. Then he raised a mirror in front of his face and wondered, could he see his reflection in the mirror? That's a true question to answer. Ours, this, would be a little bit easier. Our thought experiment includes all of you traveling to the North Pole and taking with you the pit, the pendulum, the pegs, and two more tools. You will need a space ship and a stop watch. Here we go. Up there, it's wintertime, nighttime, and I'm this as well. I'm down here in Los Angeles, where it's also wintertime and nighttime. You and I both see the same star in the sky. Now, as night rolls in today for me, I see that star set. Night rolls in today for you. That doesn't happen. That star has moved about you in a circle. Additionally, we start the swing of this pendulum in the direction of that star. And as the star moves about you, the pendulum tracks the star, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day. How can we resolve this apparent difference? Folks, here's what we're going to do. All of you will jump into that spaceship and blast off on the earth, turn around, and look back where you left it. Here's what you will see. My left hand represents the swing of the pendulum pointing at that star of space. My other hand is the Earth. And as the Earth turns under the swing of this pendulum, the pendulum will not turn with the Earth. It's safe locked onto that star. Now, forget about all that. Think about me. I leave LA and go up to the North Pole. Up there, I will stand upon the axis of the Earth. That's the invisible line going right through the center of the Earth. You in the spaceship will pull out your stopwatch. I will face the star in question, and you at the start button. Now, I'm affixed to the Earth, and as the Earth turns, I turn with it. And when I face that star again, you at the start button. Now, how long is one day of the Earth? 24 hours? That's right. If you tell time using solar time, using the sun. But when you tell time using the stars, one day on Earth is actually 23 hours and 56 minutes. Now, we do the same experiment again, but this time, I take one step to the side. I'm now on the axis of the Earth. I face the star, you hit the start button, Earth rotates me around, I face the star again, you hit the stop button, and your stop button should say what? 23 hours and 56 minutes, right? No, now it's a little bit longer. Think back now to the pit, the pendulum, and the pegs. If we move the Foucault pendulum down the face of the Earth, away from the equator, the amount of time it takes for the pendulum to knock down a peg, then have the earth pull that peg back around into the swing of the pendulum, gets longer and longer and longer until we wind up back here in LA for real. And you should all wonder how many hours, days, weeks, months, years does it take for one peg to be knocked down and then wind up back into the swing of the pendulum. The answer is hours. The answer is already provided to you, right down there. 41 to 0 is 42. For 42 hours. In other words, that pendulum that we've watched this whole time is not moving away from me. Those pegs are moving towards me because we are watching possibly for the first time in your lives the rotation of the Earth. Amazing, I know. Now, this is an optical illusion. You are very well used to watching optical illusions. This is a great question. You know how the sun moves through the sky? Great question, right? No way, no way. Now, the sun is moving, but the way it moves through the sky, that's an optical illusion caused by the rotation of the Earth. You know how those stars appear to move through the sky? That's an optical illusion caused by the rotation of the Earth. Now, they are moving, but not in the way they appear to. That pendulum, it 
it's moving, but not in the way it appears to move. Those pegs are moving towards me because the Earth is rotating. Now, a few things. If no more pegs are knocked down, let us know. Because that means the Earth has stopped rotating. And we like to know about these things. Number two. You can watch the rotation of the Earth by keeping your eyes locked on that next peg. In a few moments, in a moment or so, a minute or so, it'll get knocked down. That is, if you can give us the time. That is, if you possess patience. That is, if you can tolerate the anticipation. One Tim Curry, I am not him, but then again, nobody is. So, if this is unclear in any way, shape, or form, don't worry, we are here to help you. Myself, my fellow museum guides. We even have a globe that we can, we have a pendulum on top of the globe. This is, this is in the big scale. It's a law of our universe, even in the small scale. It's a law of our universe. I bet you folks have heard about this particular law. You know when an object is put in motion, it's going to stay in motion, unless acted upon by an outside force? So this isn't foreign or alien at all. You see, a bicycle tire staying up when it's moving is controlled by this law. And this pendulum is controlled by that law as well. Now you have a firm foundation to understand and comprehend the movement of celestial bodies in the sky. You now know that when you see the moon, there's more to them than meets the eye. You now know that the Earth you're standing upon, and have been standing upon your whole lives, is a dynamic Earth. It's spinning, it's bulging, it's flexing, as it orbits around our sun. If you folks have any questions or if you need anything explained, please let us know. We are here to help. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I do call for educating as well as entertaining. Keep your eye on the day and enjoy.